Hey, what's up everybody? Merry Christmas. It is about 11 o'clock almost on December 24th, Christmas Eve. I'm really, really excited for tomorrow. I have a feeling I'm gonna get a lot of cool metal related gifts under my tree, and I hope you are too. I um, hope you do get them under your tree. Um, so today, I wanna kinda do a Christmas episode, um, and I'm gonna go ahead and just say this is going to be the first annual Headbangers Closet Christmas episode. That's right. As y'all know, I'm a huge Christmas guy. Really excited for tomorrow, my little girls, you know, in her room sleeping and thinking about what Santa Claus is going to bring her. So I'm really excited for that. So I want to do a Christmas episode for you guys, Headbangers Closet style. So, excuse me. Everybody says that Die Hard is a Christmas movie, which it is. So, but I want to talk about an album that kind of in that vein where it's like, oh, it's a Christmas movie, really? Well, this is a Christmas album. Metallica's live shit binge and purge. It's a goddamn Christmas album, folks. No bullshit. Came out November 23rd, 1993. Right in time for the Christmas season. Um, huge influence on my life growing up. I believe it come out, I was, I think, a, I like a sophomore, maybe a junior in high school. Uh, didn't have a whole lot of access. This was before the internet, guys. Sorry, I'm that old. Before the internet, didn't have a whole lot of access to things. There wasn't really too many record stores around where I lived. I kind of could get what I could get. Um, and just hats off to my mom. Uh, she's just a great woman my entire life. Every Christmas, she was like buying me Motley Crue cassette tapes, Black Sabbath, Iron Maiden, you know, Poison. You know, I was a big hair band fan back in the day because I watched MTV, you know, like ACDC, Van Halen, um... Rainbow, Deep Purple, all these cassette tapes. Those are my Christmas gifts. My mom was a big music lover, and I kind of took uh, took after her, but I kind of went to metal. Um, and, you know, credit to her, she would buy me all this stuff. So, uh, anyway, this thing come out November 23rd, 1993. I wanted it. It was number one on my Christmas list back in the day. You know, your mom's like, oh, what do you want for Christmas? Give me a list. I'm, you know, I'll try to get it. And uh, this is number one on my list. That Christmas came and went. That morning, I put on the little Santa hat and I gave out all the gifts to everybody in the family. Uh, at the end of the, like, whatever, however long it took us to open them, there was nothing under the tree. Got up to get ready to go to uh, our extended family's house, which is what we did every year. About ready to leave the house. My mom's like, hey, you know, Brett, there's a, there's a gift for you under the tree. You forgot. And I was kind of thinking, that's BS because... I was a Santa for the morning, and I didn't see anything else under there. Go to the living room, and lo and behold, under the tree, there's a gift. Shaped just like what I think the Metallica Live Ship Binge and Purge box set should be shaped like. And lo and behold, it was, that was it. Ripped it open. I was so excited. Jumped on my mom's arms, gave her a huge hug. Told her how much I loved her, how happy I was. Like I said at the beginning of the episode, this was a huge influence on me. I didn't know all of Metallica's catalog. I knew maybe like 80 to 85% of it. Like I said, I was just a high school kid. I didn't have access to everything. If a buddy of mine didn't have a cassette tape of, of something, a lot of times like I wasn't hearing it. I only had one album at the time in my possession. Actually two. I had the Injustice for All cassette tape and then the Garage Days cassette tape. So, um... Didn't have it all, but I knew most of it. So, immediately, opened up the CDs. I put it in my little CD disc player. Cranked it into Sam Manuel. Rocking out to it. Um, the next song, Creeping Death. Little did I know, with a house full of, you know, the kids getting ready to go to extended families. And I'm, as I'm cranking it, um, didn't know James was going to be cussing. So, when he's like... Fuck yeah, we're ready. Are you ready, my friends? Creeping death. You know, my mom comes busting and turn that off. You know, she had no idea it was cussing. You know, she knew the hell difference a live album. You know, whatever. Anyway, played the shit out of this thing for. Still to this day, I play it all the freaking time. The the CD that is uh, the audio. Um, I li I watched the videos though back in the day, so much. Justice eighty nine is still my. All-time favorite Metallica live show. Um, really liked this San Diego show, but as I discussed yesterday or the other day on the DVD uh, episode, I'm not a big fan of the style, like the cutaway style. Um, from this box set, you get the Sabbath True video, 
and you get the uh, Whiplash video, promo video, and you get a lot of the stuff from uh, wherever my Rome, although most of it was from the Year and the Half-Life of Metallica uh, documentary. But I'm not a fan of that cutaway style. Uh, but anyway, Seattle 89 is just basically flawless. Like, it's right up there. 1A and 1B with Iron Maiden's Live After Death, in my opinion. Um, so, really love it. Love the fact that they kind of remastered it for vinyl recently. Um, so, anyway. Long, after years, you know, I kind of lost the box set. I had most of the items, but everything kind of got lost. Turns out a, a, a step, an ex-stepmom of mine, uh, one of my dad's ex-wife's, Threw it away along with a bunch of my fan cans, which pissed me off, but still had the CDs, which I showcased uh, last night on my live CD episode. And in 2002, they re-released just the DVDs, uh, and I think the CDs on their own, but uh, anyway, these are the DVDs. So, but today, Christmas Eve, uh, I gotta give a big shout out to my buddy Russ at... Um, 10,000 Hertz Records in Opelika, Alabama. He had a copy of the original Live Ship Engine Purge box set with the VHS tapes all complete. A little bit of love on the cover. Um, uh, a little bit of love in use, which I, I like. And uh, so I, he let me come down to his record store today and pick it up. So thank you to good buddy Russ. This is the box set. It is just like the road case the band uses to this day. Freaking badass. As far as box set goes, the packaging is probably the best. Uh, really, really close second would be uh, Slayer's uh, box set, where it's basically a machine gun ammo can. Uh, anyway, so this thing's great. It's got everything the original had. Let's pop it out here. Let's go over some of the things. Anyway, so you got the CDs, you got the backstage snake pit pass. Um, if you've seen the videos, the snake pit was in the stage. Now, I know they brought it back during the World Mandate Tour, but it technically wasn't the same. It wasn't in the stage. It was like they put the ramps out ahead of the stage, and then you were in there. But this tour, you were literally like in the stage. Um, so these are all the VHS tapes, three of them all complete, all with the same red and black Metallica logo. Um, I do not have a VHS player anymore, but whatever. I don't give a shit. Uh, so, Scary Guy Stencil, and let me tell you, the one I had, it's all black and red, because for basically two years of high school, I just went out and bought Hanes white t-shirts and black t-shirts and just spray painted them, you know, black on black or red on the white, and then white on the black t-shirt. That's basically what I went to high school almost every day uh, for about two years. So, uh, yeah, no wonder why I never had a girlfriend. So another thing when I'm drinking Coors Light is like, I love you Coors Light, yeah. When I get you in my guts, it makes me play way too fucking good, yeah. So, first real live record I actually, you know, kind of owned. I had uh, Iron Maiden's Live After Death previously, but this was the first one that kind of really got the between song banter. And to this day, you know... Almost 30 years later, I still use his Between Song and Banter in, like, day-to-day -day conversations with the wife, you know. Her and Hadley are doing something, you know, in the kitchen. And I'm like, I like the way you guys share hair, dicks, you know. Just random shit from James. James-isms. I just bring out everyday life, you know. But, uh, anyway, so, probably, as I got older, the best thing about this box set was the booklet. And I'm not going to lie to you. This thing was in my bathroom for three to four years as reading material. Because uh, it's not only kick-ass and cool, it's educational as hell. Um, tons and tons and tons of faxes from management to other management, management to promoters, <clears throat> about everything related to business of a tour. From tickets available to tickets sold to how many seats each arena in each city holds to how many seats they sold... Um, how many seats they're selling in, like, say, an arena in Cincinnati versus another act that played that same arena, like, the month before or the year before. Tons of stuff. The riders are in this thing. Um, riders and Metallica really aren't all that odd. You know, bottle of Grey Poupon mustard, bottle of Hellman's mayonnaise, bottle of ketchup, 
you know, Coors Light. Um, not a whole lot of weird stuff like Van Halen or, you know, Axl Rose from Guns N' Roses. But as you can see, you get a lot of, like, the faxes, um, itineraries, each day show. You know, what time they got to get up, what time the bus or the, the van's going to pick them up at the hotel rooms. Or what time they going to go on stage. Tons and tons of pictures of Ross Halfin. This thing's just full of just badass photos. You know, more badass photos. Uh, tons and tons of just kick-ass. Like, here's basically each city. <clears throat> and then, like, how many seats and how many tickets they sold. And, like, 9% of them was completely sold out. Um, you know, Guns N' Roses summer tour right here. Uh, you know, letters from the management explaining the dangers of having a local band open. Uh, because most often, more often not, local band sucks and no one's going to like it. Um, letters from fans, letters from celebrities, uh, to the band, to the management. A uh, really cool letter from a fan when Metallica's playing uh, her, his or her town the night before Thanksgiving. She invites them, she writes a letter to the management inviting the band to her house for Thanksgiving. And then in pretty good detail, details what they're going to have for dinner, just in case maybe it might be like an allergic, to, you know, one of the band members might be allergic to something, so they know ahead of time. Uh, really cool, if I was that fan, whether they came or not, I don't think they did, but whatever, whether they came or not, I'd be stoked as shit that this thing was in the book. Um, stage setups, you know, with pyrotechnics and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of cool stuff, different things they can and cannot do in each city. Um, so many graphics on push head designs, uh, you know, for approval, stuff like that. Just, you know, so many different like daily itineraries of the different cities, different shows. Um, really, really cool. I mean, hell, this thing is about worth it just for the freaking booklet. Like, if you're into this stuff, the ins and outs of touring, and you've never done it, this book is awesome. So, anyway, uh, like I said, though, uh, what was really cool about this box set is I wasn't 100% familiar with all of the Metallica's catalog. You know, like I said, I knew about 80, 85% of it. So hearing a lot of stuff I didn't really know before, uh, especially like the Am I Evil um, because at the time, you know, the Garage Days didn't have that. That Am I Evil and Blitzkrieg came on the B-side of Creeping Death and then uh, a special version of Kill Em All, which I didn't have either one of those at the time. Um, so really cool to hear Am I Evil and then kind of try to research it and find the, you know, the original recorded version from the album, um, stuff like that. So this thing was a huge eye-opener for me. I was already a huge fan of the band. I honestly believe this box set is kind of what took it to completely new, ridiculous heights. You know, as you can see, you know, kind of got a little bit of a problem. <laughs> um, but, you know, whatever. Uh, it's cool. I love this thing. Um, like I said, it's a Christmas album to me. I listen to this thing. I would listen to the audio, excuse me, at least once a month, if not more. But I, for some some. Strange twist of fate. Always find myself listening to this thing around Christmas because to me this like you know some things just kind of get in your head and stay there and kind of you associate them with times of your life and this to me is just associates with Christmas. So I felt it appropriate to do this episode today for Christmas, my first annual Christmas episode. Um, I hope you dig it. Um, let me know in the comments below what you think about this box set. The booklet, the, the the live show video, the live you know the audio, whatever, anything you want to talk about, leave a comment below. William, kind of got a little drunk last night doing the videos. I have posted them twice. Accidentally deleted the one with your comment. So please, if you could go back to the one that's up there and just comment again for me, I'd really appreciate that, dude. Uh, make it worth your while uh, when we do the Instagram page for uh, for Headbangers Closet. Uh, hook you up with a free tea, free t-shirt. Um, so I right, appreciate if you do that for me, buddy. And uh, everybody else, if it's your first time watching or whatever, you know, if you dig it, hit the like and subscribe. If you think I'm a piece of shit, I suck, whatever, then don't. Or comment below, tell me how much of a shit bag I am. Whatever, it's a free country. Uh, anyway, 
Merry Christmas to every one of you guys. Really appreciate it. Jason, Val, always appreciate your support. Um, Mike, everybody else, uh, have a Merry Christmas, and we'll talk to you guys this week. All right, take care.